So if I just type in some stuff, I'll move you over here and change the color. We click save. I can now rerun this and load it goes back to how it was. All right, so starting out here, I've got a 2D scene and let's just make a 2D scene there. I don't know, I'll call it world and just save that real quick. Um, and let's just add in our canvas layer here and let's make uh, let's make a vertical box container. Add a couple buttons. I'll call this one the save button and I'll put save on it. And then I'll duplicate it and call this one the load button. And then let's see, uh, so we got these. Oh, and then change the text there. And then uh, let's just increase the size of that. Move this over here to the middle, something like that. And we need to make some stuff for just testing out the save and load. So let's add in the text edit box here. I'm gonna Q and just scale that up, W to move it. Um, and placeholder text, I'll just say like enter text here or something. And then let's add in a texture rect also, and just put the icon on this, move it over here. And that'll just be another thing we can mess with for testing the saving and loading. We'll just add a script onto the world here. And um, so for this, we need references to our buttons. So let's just hold control, drop that there, drag, hold control, drop that there. Then uh, let's do function ready and I'll just put pass there as a placeholder and we'll do function save game and function load game. And then, uh, so we're gonna have the save button is going to on button up. We'll do connect to save game and then control shift D to duplicate a line. Copy that and let's put load game over here and load button over there. So when we click save, it'll call this. When we click load, it'll call this. And I also want to do just some stuff for testing again. So um, maybe I'll just keep this separated out. So this will be like our um, for saving and loading. I'll just put a comment there. And then this is for um, changing, I don't know, the world or something changing the state of the world. Um, so we'll put in function process and we just, I'll just use some existing input. Just say, I don't know, is action just pressed UI? I don't know. Let's say UI left. So if we press the left arrow key. Um, then we need to do something. Uh, let's see. I want to change the color of this sprite. So I'll just put that over here and I'll just make a list of colors. We'll just say, I don't know, colors equal, oops, colors equal, and we'll say color dot white and color dot red and blue, let's say, and then we'll just have an index. We'll say color next equals zero. And then over here, we can just do uh, plus equals one, and then, oops, I want that to be indented. And then module modulus by colors dot size, and then we just set the texture rec dot modulate to equal colors color index. So whenever we press the left arrow key now, it's just going to change the color of this texture rec. Um, and yeah, that's just so we can save the color and load it later. Um, also, if I press, let's do um, I don't know right. Let's set this um, dot position to equal, I don't know, let's get the global mouse position, right? So um, I can just test this out real quick. I'll just hit F5, select current scene, sure. And if I just tap the right arrow key, it moves it to my mouse. And the left arrow key, it cycles through our colors. And of course, over here, I can type stuff in, whatever. Who cares? Okay. So now I have data. Let's actually go ahead and save and load that data, right? So um, uh, let's see, first off, saving the game. I need to get our saved data. So I'll make a dictionary here and I'm just going to, uh, let's see, save data. Let's just say uh, text is equal to the, we need to get this text edit. 
node here, and we'll just say text edit dot text. So I get the text from it, <clears throat> and then we need to get uh, let's see, let's say position is equal to this position. Of course, that's not going to save the way we want it to. We're going to save this as a JSON file. So I'm going to do var to string over here, and then that'll convert this vector two into a string, and then later we'll be able to convert it back using string to var. Uh, finally, we're going to save the color index. It's going to be the color index, right? And now we want to actually save it. So let's make a path for where our save file go. I'll make it a constant. And I'll say save file path. And then this is going to equal, uh, we start with user and then colon slash slash. And then I do, I don't know, game save dot save. And now user this corresponds to whatever on your operating system is the kind of like temp app data section. So let me find that real quick. It's um, on Windows, it's percent app data. Oh, here I have it written down. It's this. So percent app data, good O, and then you have your project name. So if you just copy this, and so in this case I have save load game tutorial, I can go to my like folders over here um, you can see here are all of my, um, it went, yeah, I just copied in that and it went to all of my Godot projects, save data, right? So you can see any, even like there's Crowley Squad, that's a Godot game. So it saves to this folder. Um, so if I just go to uh, save load game tutorial, where is that? Um, here, right? You can see there's nothing here. We don't have anything saved. Uh, there are some logs. If I run, see, because I ran the game, before it just saved whatever it printed out. So like this is where you would send players if your game crashed, just tell them to go to this folder. Um, but this is where your save game is going to go unless you're on uh, Mac or Linux, I think are both the same. They go here, I know Linux goes there. Um, but yeah, so this is what user uh, colon slash slash leads to is this directory. And then we just give it our save file and you can do whatever extension you want. I just use dot save. So now when you actually save it, so we're going to go over here uh, to save, and we're just gonna say, uh, let's create a new file. We're gonna do save file equals file access dot open uh, at our save file path and use file access dot write. So it just opens a file at this path in write mode. And then we just say, if the save file is null, we can just print, uh, I don't know, error creating save file, and then the error code will be file access dot get open error. There we go, and return. Otherwise, we can just do var, uh, we'll just say JSON string, we can name it, do JSON dot stringify, and put in our save data, and it'll convert this dictionary into a JSON string, right? And then we can just do a save file dot store string json string and we're done that's how you save data so let me just go ahead and i'll run this and if i click i know i'll just put that over there click save we can now go to our folder over here and you can see that the game save file has showed up i can open it and you'll see the uh um, data in there right Now, once we do that, um, uh, let's see. We next we want to do loading. So I'm going to go over to here, and we're just going to say if uh, file access uh, dot file exists. So we want to see, or if the file does not exist, save file path. And then we can just print. I don't know. Save file not found and return. And then um, in here, we want to load the save file. So we'll say fi save file is file access dot open save file path uh, file access dot read. And then so we just open the file at this path in read mode instead of write mode. And then we just say bear json string equals save file dot get as text. So just get all the text in the file, and then we do, uh, let's create a new JSON object here. And 
Yeah, usually you can do either you can use the static classes within JSON or you can make a JSON object and use it through that. Um, and here we just do parse result equals JSON dot parse and we parse the JSON string. And then um, if not uh, it parse result is equal to OK, which is just a predefined constant. Basically, we just want to see if the result is OK or if it's not OK, then return and we can print the uh, I don't know, JSON parse error or whatever we say. And you can do uh, because we have an object that has the error message stored. So we can say uh, JSON that get error message. And you can also do the um, I don't know, you can say online, or is it JSON dot get error line. So yeah, if it doesn't work, it'll print yeah, what the error message is and on what line. Um, now, and then we return. And then finally, if it did parse successfully, let me just do save data equals JSON dot get data, we say. And so that we've now parsed it. So we are able to parse it and we can get the data out and return it as our dictionary. Then what we could do is just flip this around, like say, okay, now we do save data text goes into text edit text, right? Um, and we just retrieve that. But a good habit to be in, which I do, is just to check if it actually is there. So if text in save data, then um, yeah, if that if that parameter actually exists in our data, then put it in, then we load it, right? And it's a good idea to do this because you never know what might change in your game down the road. For example, let's say I'm making the game <coughs> and I have a bunch of save files, uh, right? And then down the road, I'm like, okay, I wanna add some new parameter to save and load. So I add that parameter in. If I don't have this if statement, none of my old save files will work. They'll just crash the game on load because it'll be, oh, I'm expecting this new parameter text or whatever, and that's not in these old save files, so we crash. But if you just put in the if statement, then it'll just load with the default and you don't have to worry about that. You can still use your old save files for testing or whatever. It's great for, yeah, great for testing and game when you're working on your game. And also, of course, the opposite is true. If for whatever reason you decide to stop saving something or maybe there's some defaults that are loaded by a parent enemy class or something and it always saves and loads this one thing but then the subclass overwrites it um, and has its own save thing and but it's still using the superclass on the load or for whatever reason you know it's not saving something but it's expecting to load something and it's just easier to keep it that way then you just have the if statement it's just yeah just a good practice to always front load with that. And then we can just, of course, copy it and do uh, if the color index is in there, then we wanna do um, color index is equal to um, the save data dot color index. And one thing to note is that JSON, I believe it always saves integers as a float or when, when you parse it, it parses it as a float. I've run into this problem a bunch of times and I. I would always get confused. Why is my game not working? It's because I was expecting an integer. And when I saved and loaded it, things would break because it would load it as a float. So you just always, whenever you load an integer, you just convert it to an integer um, to make sure it's an integer and not a float. You could also do var to string and then convert it back as string to var. Um, but with integers, I like to have them displayed in the actual um, save file. Let me show that as an integer, you see there's no quotes around it. So it's easier to edit if I'm testing stuff and I wanna make a custom save file or if I want players to be able to access their save file and edit things, it's just, a, it's simpler when it's, you know, doesn't have quotation marks around the number. Now, um, the final one, of course, is the position. So we'll just, I'll just copy this. Say if position is in there, then we do uh, new, are equal to the position and change this to string to var, right? And also this, we do need to update 
the color still just because we updated the index doesn't mean it's updating the graphics so usually i'll have instead of you know i could just copy this line of code and put it there too but usually i'm doing more complicated stuff in a game so i just have a method for update color or something and then i put that over here and then i can just put that there and put that after the load as well make sure the same code is run there's less code duplication right so now let's go ahead and run, see if I got everything set up properly. Um, oh, and you notice if I full screen, it's not scaling. So just to make things easier to see, I'll go to window and uh, let's see, mode, do canvas items or stretch. I think that'll let me, yeah, there we go. Now we can show, okay. So if I just type in some stuff, I'll move you over here and change the color, we click save. I can now rerun this and load goes back to how it was. And I'll change something. Maybe I'll put you over here, change the color and load it, reset it. Okay, change it again. Let's put you over here as a different color. Save and load it. Yep. All right. So you can see everything works as it showed, uh, as it as it should. And that's basically how you do saving and loading. Pretty straightforward. If you'd like to support me, check out my game art course on Udemy. It teaches how I make 2D and 3D game art in my games.